guys, welcome to um, uh, your, I think, second to last math lesson video. So um, you guys are, we're going to be covering two lessons today, but then we just have one lesson um, after that to cover, and you guys have covered all of your fourth grade material, which is awesome. So yay! Um, today, we're, as I mentioned, we're going to be covering two lessons. Um, we're going to, there's a lot of information, so we're going to be moving at a pretty good speed. Um, so, uh, the, we're going to be starting off on page 332, um, with lesson 31, which covers, uh, points, lines, rays, and angles, um, much of which we have talked about before in the previous lesson. So, um, that's why we're going to move through it fairly quickly. Um, but, um, yeah, so let's get started. So we talked a little bit last time about points, rays, and line segments, um, or I'm sorry, rays, line segments, and lines. Um, a point just means a, a place in a single location in space. So um, when we talk in, about space in math terms, we're not talking about space like outer space. We're talking about the space that it takes up. So the, for example, the space of my whiteboard, um, we could, this is one point on the space of my whiteboard. Um, now, in math terms, points in space can mean anything. So it could mean if you were planting a garden bed and you have a single point where you would like to plant a certain flower. Um, it can mean a place in your house, a point where you want to put your TV. Um, so it, um, it translates to a, a broader sense, but in math terms, we're often talking about um, a 2D plane, such as a piece of paper or a whiteboard, um, but, um, but you can also think of it as three-dimensional points as well. And, and remember, math is just a way for us to kind of um, make sense of the world around us. So that's why I say a point in space is um, a math term that we use, but we can also think of it in terms of um, if we were creating something where we would want to place something. So a point is just one single location in space. Um, a line segment would be, remember, part of a line that runs between two points. So if I had point A and point B, I would have a line segment that goes from A to B, and I would um, in my math terms, I would go ahead and write that as A, B, with a line over it like that to show that it's line segment A, B. Um, a line is actually one, um, is actually a series of points, all traveling along the same path, but going in both directions without end. So I showed that with my arrows at either end of my line. So we think of that as like a number line. You have different points on your number lines that represent different numbers or different fractions, or it could be anything. And really we could keep counting forever and ever in either direction. And so our line would be without end. Um, if I had my line, it, so a line segment would just have a, a line over the A and the B for points A and B. If I were to try to show a line for this A and B, I would just add those arrows to either side, showing that it goes in either direction forever and ever. Um, a ray is something that starts at a single point and then continues in one direction without end. So for example, if I had my letters A and B again, a would be the starting point of my ray, and my ray would travel through point B, so I would call it A, B still, but then I would have my ray line going above it. Um, and then an angle is what's created. Um, you can have angles made up of intersecting lines. So for example, if I had two lines going in either direction just like this, the point where they meet, I would have an angle here, 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 and here. So I would have all of those would be angles. If I were to um, 
and I can take it too, that, that's just if I have lines, but let's think if I had rays, I have a single origin point, and then two rays coming off of that origin point, going in different directions, my angle is created here. Um, you can have more than that, you can have um, uh, angles made up of line segments, as they would be if we are creating a shape. Um, but oftentimes when we're just talking about angles, we'll be using rays um, to talk about those angles. So for example, if I had my starting point as point A, and then I have a ray that goes through point B from starting from A, and then also through point C starting from A, I would have an angle that we would be made up of line segments, or I'm sorry, rays A to B and another ray of A to C. So we would want to kind of um, work backwards in, in labeling our angle. Um, so I would either say it goes from C to A to B, so angle C, A, B, or I could go the other way and say angle B, A, C, I wouldn't say angle, I wouldn't start with A because then I, um, if I'm talking, if I'm going in order, we see that we go from point C to point A to point B or the other way from B to A to C. But if I start at A, let's say I went to C first and then I had B, I would be going down like that. So instead of the angle that I have shown, C would actually be my joining point. So order does matter when we're labeling points in terms of angles and shapes, but, um, but on, for that example, we could go either from B to A to C or C to A to B. Okay, um, uh, let's go ahead and on um, page 333, um, I skipped um, over the questions on page 332 because again, we have a lot of information to cover and I wanna get through as much as possible. Um, so uh, we covered on um, page 333, point, line, segment, line, ray, and angle. So if you have questions about those still, you can refer back to that page. Um, but down on the bottom of page 333 is um, question number one, and it says, use geometry words and symbols to describe the rectangle below. So we have a rectangle with its corners labeled as A, B, C, and D. So if we were to describe this in geometric terms, we would want to use something like we have four line segments, right? Because our lines have an ending point. So we have a line that goes from A to B. So line segment AB. We also have a line segment that goes from B to C. So we have line segment BC. We have another line segment that goes from C to D. And then we have one more line segment that goes from D to A. So line segment DA. And remember, we're, we do want to go kind of in order. So I went around my rectangle A to B, B to C, C to D, and D back to A. I don't want to do A to B, B to C, C to A, because that would be creating a line through the middle of my rectangle. So if I'm describing my rectangle, I definitely want to go in order of the points that are around um, the outside of my rectangle, making up those different line segments. So I have line segment here, A to B, B to C, C to D, and D back to A. Now remember when we're talking about geometric shapes, we often talk about them, um, they're describing characteristics in terms of sides and angles. So we've described the sides. We have side made up of line segment AB, BC, CD, and DA, but we also have angles that are made. So we have angle that's made from D to A to B, right? So angle D, A, 
B, that's the dab angle. We have angle, um, so that would be with point A in the middle, right? We also have an uh, angle made up from A to B to C. So angle A, B, C. And then we also have an angle made up from B to C to D. Oops, angle B, C, D. And lastly, we have C to D to A. So D would be our middle point. C, D, and A. So if we were using geometric terms, we would want to talk about our line segments and our um, angles, and we would label them um, this way so that we could tell exactly where they are in that um, space plane. Okay, um, so turning the page, um, I have, uh, we're going to kind of go through this a little bit quickly. But on page 334, you'll see, uh, um, not right now, Scotty. Um, you'll see uh, an angle that's made up of these um, points as well. I'm going to move my computer a little bit closer. Hopefully, I still have my book out to be able to show the questions. All right. So we have. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and skip over um, the angle that I have here is the same one that's um, on page 334, but we're going to go through the questions on 335. So uh, number two says, name a real world example of a line segment. So thinking about um, where uh, you have two points that end. So if you think about like the edge of a shape, you could think about anything that has an edge, the edge of your countertop, the edge of your bookshelf, the edge of your door. So anything that has two definite um, points of starting and ending. Um, uh, number three says when you have two line segments um, or lines represented, um, I'm sorry, when two line segments, lines or rays meet at a point, they form an angle, name a real world example of an angle. So anything that has um, a point where two lines or line segments or rays may meet um, would be an example of an angle. So when I make that shape, I kind of think like scissors. So scissors would be the intersecting point of the two blades, and they would create different angles based on how far you have your scissors open or closed, right? Um, number four, name a real-world example of a ray, so something that has a starting point that, but then goes on forever. Um, I think of this, the best example of this would be like a flashlight. So you have a definite starting point, which is the bulb of your flashlight, and it sends out a beam that really goes on forever and ever. So we, there's a, a spectrum for which we can no longer see it, but the light does travel forever and ever. So the beam of a flashlight would be the best real world example that I could think of for, um, for a ray. Um, and you can also think of it as like in the name, like a ray uh, of, of light, a, a ray of sunshine, the light is going on forever and ever. All right, um, number five says, explain how the drawing below represents one line, three line segments, four rays at an angle. Um, oh, and I guess we already kind of talked about um, how we label uh, um, angles. So I guess that was why I did that. I have to remember these things. Um, oh no, this is on page 336. I'm thinking ahead and making notes to myself. Okay, so um, so let's go ahead and answer number five. It says, explain how the drawing below represents one line, three line segments, four rays, and one angle. So you have something that looks like this. And that you have points A, B, and C you would have a line segment running from A to B and B to C. You would have a ray that moves from B to C through point C and from B through point A. And you would have a line that runs through points A and C. So you would have all of those. Um, so once again, a little bit slower, we have points on a line A, B, and C. So our line runs through all of those points. You have a line segment that just runs through points A and C, 
because it has a definite starting and ending point. You can also think of it as a line segment between points A and B and B and C because those would be definite starting points. And then we can also think of B as our starting point with a line running out in either direction forever and ever. Remember, this would be like our flashlight bulb with the light coming out in either direction forever and ever. So a ray going from point B all the way out through point A and from B all the way out through point C. So um, uh, the, the tricky part of that one um, so it says, explain how the drawing below represents one line. So we had one line, three line segments, one, two, and three. Um, four rays, one, two. We could also think of it as point A going out and point C going out, three, four. Um, but then also one angle. So we don't see like a, a little L shape or a wedge shape, but... Remember, we think of uh, um, in terms, when we measure angles, we think about them as, as points around a circle. So remember that all the way, if I start at one point and go all the way around my circle, that would be 360 degrees. But if I go halfway around my circle, that would be 180 degrees. So I have an angle here of 180 degrees if it's going in a straight line. So that's kind of a tricky question. Okay, um, on uh, the questions at the bottom of that page, number six and seven. So number six says, how many lines are in this shape? So you have a pentagon. It has five sides and looks something similar to this. Only they have it more like this. And they have it as A... B, C, D, and E. So how many lines? We would have one from A to B, one from B to C, one from C to D, one from D to E, and one from E back to A. Um, really, it should be line segments, right? Um, but we could also think of it as just these are points along, if we were to continue the sides, we would have lines that go in all of these different directions. So how many lines would we have? We'd have A to B would be 1, B to C would be a 2, C to D would be 3, D to E would be 4, and E back to A would be 5. So there are five lines because we had five sections of our shape. Um, how many rays would there be? Well, we could think of a ray as starting at one point and going in either direction. So we would have one going this way and one going this way. So that's two. We'd have one starting at C, going the other way through point B and D. So that's three. That's four, rather. We have one starting at D and going through C and E, five, six starting at E and going through points D and A, 7, 8, and starting at A and going through B and E, 9, 10. So there's 10 rays um, and five lines that you could draw through this shape. But there, we're not showing the rays and we're not showing the lines. So really, we would just be talking in terms of line segments, right? Okay. Um, number seven says, how many line segments are in this shape? So now they're being more specific. They have this shape shown. So going back to number five, we could create 10 rays and five lines, but what's actually shown are line segments. So if we actually go back to our shape, since we're showing line segments, how many lines would we have? Zero. How many rays would we have? Zero. Because we only have segments of the line that's shown to create the shape. So seven then says how many line segments, so they're now more specific in this shape, 
So we would have one going from here, from point to point, so that's one. Another one going from here to here, that's two. One from here to here, that's three. Here to here is four. Here to here is five. Here to here is six. Here to here is seven. Here to here is eight. Here to here is nine. Here to here is 10. Here to here is 11. And here to here would be 12. So in our math terms, we would have a dodecahedron shape because it has 12 sides to it or 12 line segments. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next page where I have this angle shown. So um, I'm going to go ahead and um, go over questions 8, 9, and 10 on the poster here. So we have... Um, uh, so 8 says, model it shows a right angle, draw a right angle, and then use three points to name a right angle on the figure on the previous page. So if I have a right, I have two right angles here, actually. I have one that's created from A to B to C, and then I also have one from C to B to E. Or I could go backwards, too, and say E to B to C, or C to B to A. But... I would have two right angles that would be created that way. Um, nine says an angle that has a smaller opening than a right angle is called an acute angle. Remember, acute little angle. Um, and so um, if we were going to label, so we would have two acute angles, one running from D to B to E, but we would also have another one, C to B to D, because remember, we're splitting up our right angle. We know that this is a right angle, so we know that we have two um, angles that are both less than 90 degrees that make up that 90 degree angle. So we have angle CBD, which we would write like this, and we would have angle DBE, You could also write them as angle D, B, C, or E, B, D, but I chose to start at C to B to D and D to B to E. All right, uh, number 10 says an angle that is white, it has a wider opening than a right angle, um, is, uh, but is not as uh, wide as a straight line, is called an obtuse angle. So in this one, I would have A to E would be a 180, so it's a, it's a straight line. But I would also have an obtuse angle made by going through this section here. So A to B to D, angle A, B, D would be an obtuse angle. Um, I'm going to skip number 11. I would like for you guys to try to do number 3, or I'm sorry, numbers 12 and 13 on your own. So um, uh, 12 says, how many acute angles are there in the shape below? So finding those angles that are less than 90 degrees. Um, and number 13 says, how many um, obtuse angles are in the shape below? So um, angles that are greater than 90 degrees. All right. Um, on the next page, we're going to be talking about parallel and perpendicular lines. So... Um, parallel lines are lines that run side by side forever. So remember, lines um, go in either direction for uh, forever and ever. And parallel lines are lines that do that without ever meeting. So if I were to have two lines like this, they run side by side. They're never going to meet. If I have lines that cross, that create right angles, they are called perpendicular lines. So if you think of it like where they cross in an intersection, those would be perpendicular lines creating right angles in each section. Um, we're going to largely skip over pages 338 and 339 because I feel like um, you guys have a pretty good grasp Excuse me, of... Um, excuse me, of geometric shapes and perpendicular and parallel angles. Um, so, but I do want you guys to go ahead and try um, numbers 19 and 20 on your own. 
So 19 says, how many pairs of parallel sides does the shape uh, below appear to have? So you have a trapezoid. Um, and so you have your top and bottom lines you could extend and they would not meet. But if you were to extend your other two lines, they would meet at a certain point in space. So you have one set of um, parallel lines. Um, question 20 says a rectangle is a parallelogram with blank pairs of parallel sides. So how many parallel sides would you have in a rectangle? I'm going to let you guys answer that one on your own. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next section, which is, um, so we've talked, we've just breezed through um, angles, rays, line segments, um, parallel lines. Now, uh, really, the, the, what I think the point of going over that is, is to talk about how we classify shapes. So how we talk about geometric shapes um, depends on um, sides, angles, um, and things like that. So, um, so we're actually going to go ahead and start on page um, 347. And we're actually going to start at the bottom of page 347. Um, so when we talk about shapes, we think about attributes. So just like um, I think of attributes as like characteristics or like character traits, if it, if it were a character in a story, um, uh, that they share and characteristics that are different. So, um, so you can classify shapes based on attributes that their sides share or are different, or you can also classify them based on their angles that they might share or are different. Um, so for example, they're saying if we had a game where you had to classify shapes and um, you could have different classifications so if I were to look at these three shapes and group them based on sh um, shapes that had one pair, at least one pair of parallel sides, all of these shapes would meet that criteria. All of them have at least one pair of parallel sides, sides that, again, would never meet. So, um, so we can think of... Um, we can think of classifying shapes in terms of sides. Um, if I had different shapes and I still wanted to do the same classification of um, shapes that had par at least one set of parallel sides, if I had this group of shapes, I would have two of the shapes that would have parallel sides. But then I have this third one that does not meet that criteria because all of the sides would meet at some point. So, um, uh, yeah, so that's basically as much as I want to talk about with that one. Um, on the next page, we're going to skip through a large part of this as well and go over to page 349. And at the bottom, and again, I, as always, I'm skipping over questions, but if you have things that are unclear, please feel free to come back to those. Um, work through the, the pieces in, in the um, instruction book uh, to make it clearer for you. But these are things just based on my um, working with you guys that I think that most of you have a good grasp of these things. And so I don't think that you, we need to work through them all together. Um, but again, I would encourage you if you if there are parts that you're like, oh, teacher just didn't really explain that very well. It doesn't make sense to me. Go back and go over the parts that we that we skipped over. Um, but um, but again, I think a lot of it is pretty self-explanatory. So um, so we talked a little bit about sides. We can have parallel sides or not parallel sides when we classify shapes. Um, now we're going to be talking about angles. So we're going to be skipping down to um, numbers 11 and 12 on the bottom of page 349. So they have a Venn diagram 
that they have created that looks like this. And they have one bubble that's marked as acute angles, which I'm just going to draw with an angle that is less than 90 degrees. They have one that is marked as right angles, which I'm going to draw as an angle that is approximating 90 degrees. And they have one that is obtuse angles. And um, so I'm going to show that with one that's greater than 90 degrees. So um, 11 says, where does the rhombus at the right belong in the Venn diagram below? Mark the place with an X. So our, um, on our Venn diagram, our, the rhombus that they show, it does not have any um, right angles. So we're going to just go ahead and pretend like this part and this part and this part and this part, all the parts that have to do with right angles. We're going to say, nope, our rhombus doesn't belong in any of those parts because it does not have any right angles. Um, it has acute angles, but it also has obtuse angles. So it has angles that are less than 90 degrees and it has angles that are greater than 90 degrees. And so that would be an attribute that it shares. So we would show where the rhombus goes by marking an X in between the acute and obtuse um, areas. So that's a characteristic. It, um, that the rhombus has is that it has both of those types of angles, but it does not have um, any right angles. Um, number 12 says circle the shape that has an acute angle, a right angle, and an obtuse angle. So if we were to look at the first shape is a rectangle. Remember rectangles have square corners. They only have right angles. So that one would not have any acute or obtuse angles. It only has a right angle. And we're looking for one that has all three types of angles. The next one, next shape, is a trapezoid. And trapezoids have two acute angles in the corners, two that are less than 90 degrees, and two that are greater than 90 degrees. So this would have both acute and obtuse angles, but no right angles. And then the last shape that we have is a quadrilateral, but it's an unnamed quadrilateral because it doesn't have um, other characteristics that we can classify it with a, a, a name, but it does have a right angle, it has two right angles. No. Nope. Just the one that I drew has two right angles. This one kind of goes up more like that. So it has an acute angle, has two obtuse angles, and it has a right angle. So the third shape would be the one that would have all three types of angles. Okay, we're breezing through, guys. Okay, this is what I really wanted us to get to, is in sorting triangles. So we're just talking about the specific category of triangles. Triangles are three-sided shapes, right? So we can look at classifying our triangles based on angles or based on sides. Um, all geometric shapes are going to have sides and angles, are going to be made up of sides and angles. And when we talk about different triangles, we talk about, um, we give them different names based on what attributes they have. So on the top here, I have three different triangles, and I have them labeled by the types of sides that they have. So we have an equilateral triangle here, is a triangle that has all three sides that are the same length. And you hear equal in equilateral, so I always think of it as all sides are equal. Equilateral triangles, all sides are the same. Um, an isosceles triangle, can have all three sides that are the same length, um, but so it could be an equilateral triangle that we could classify as an isosceles triangle, but more often we see it as two sides that are the same and one side that is not the same. And then the last triangle name that we classify by um, side is called a scalene triangle. And a scalene triangle has zero sides that are the same length. So we have one, two, three sides that are all different lengths. 
Now that's if we're talking about triangles based on their sides, but we can also talk about triangles based on their angles. So a triangle that has a right angle included in it would be called a right triangle. A triangle that includes an obtuse angle would be an obtuse uh, triangle. Um, but, and you may think, oh, a triangle that has an acute angle would be an acute, ang uh, an acute triangle. But you'll notice that on these other triangles, my right triangle has one right angle, but the other two have to be acute in order for it to still be a triangle. On my obtuse um, triangle, same thing. I have to have two acute angles for the other angles in order for it to be a triangle. So in order for it to be an acute triangle, all three angles have to be acute. Okay, so triangles by angles, right triangles would have one right angle, obtuse triangles would have one obtuse angle, and acute triangles would have three acute angles. Okay, so um, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and answer the questions um, on page 351. Um, so uh, 13 says, look at triangle A. How many sides are the same length? They're all labeled as 8 inches, so it would have three sides that are the same length. What kinds of angles does it have? All of them look to be less than 90 degrees, so it would be three acute triangle or ac acute angles. And so what are two names for this triangle? We could call it either an equilateral triangle because it has all three sides that are equal or an acute triangle because it has all three angles that are acute. 14 says, what are two names for triangle B? So it looks like there are two acute angles and one angle that is larger than 90 degrees or obtuse. So we could call it an obtuse triangle. It also has three sides that are all different lengths, so we could call it a scalene triangle as well. So scalene or obtuse. Um, the second part of that qu of question 14 says, can this triangle also be called an acute triangle? No, because remember, acute triangles have to have all three angles are acute. So an obtuse triangle is naturally going to have two other angles in it that are going to be acute, but in order to be labeled an acute triangle, it has to have all three angles be acute. Um, number 15, what are two names for triangle C? So we have two sides that are the same length, one side that is not. Um, so we could call that a, an isosceles triangle because we have two sides that are equal but not all three. Um, and it looks that all, um, it looks also like all two, uh, there's, um, sorry, there's an angle at the top that if you turn your book, you see that it creates an L shape. So it would be an, um, a right triangle because it creates a, um, a right angle, um, but it, and also an isosceles triangle. And then 16 says, explain how to give a complete description of a triangle. So a complete description of a triangle tells, um, what the, uh, tells about the sides as well as the angles. So it takes both into consideration. All right, so um, number 17 and 18, I'm going to have you guys do on your own. 17, give a complete description of the triangle below. So using both the labels for sides and angles would be that complete description. And 18, what do the triangles below have in common and how are they different? Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and post your um, practice book pages along with this assignment. And congratulations, guys. We have just one lesson left, and I'll see you next time. Bye.